Maybe we'll mix up a little bit more. Okay, well, it's been a while for me now. It's been a couple of days for me, only a few seconds for you. Got a lot done since the last time I did anything on this video. Uh, we've got all of our cement back aboard down. Uh, all of the joints in that have been taped. The area where that cabinet came off the wall over there, we had to pack, tear that bulkhead out and patch things up. That's where it was. That's all finished off now. Uh, we've painted the ceiling, we've painted the walls, we painted the entire kitchen again. Uh, it needed some touch up, same color, but there was marks where chairs had rubbed up on walls and different things. So because we had to paint that area in there, we just decided to go ahead, go around it, paint everything, pull the light switch covers out of the way and, and did that. So now we're working on trying to lay out our tiles and everything is, uh, it, it's hard to find a spot or two places to measure from in this room. So you see that wall there, that's a fairly short wall from the corner to where that railing starts. And then the railing takes up oh, close to about 10 feet and it dips in a little bit past the edge of the wall. So nothing is even there as far as the railing and the wall goes. This is the longest continuous wall that we have down to that corner. So I've been measuring off of that wall to get a plumb line in this direction, uh, but now trying to get one in the opposite direction, the room is not square up in this corner up here, and it's throwing things off if I try and measure up in here. So I'm looking at, if I run a chalk line along that wall, or out from that wall, the same distance all the way down, and then I try and measure from the chalk line from here to the front door. The front door wall is out by a half an inch from one side to the other. It measures evenly from a chalk line here over to the stairs, but not to the front door. So I'm just playing around and I'm thinking now that the longest straight piece I've got maybe to work off of the, to make things square is that railing that's over in behind all the appliances here now. I've shoved everything into this corner out of my way. So I can get to the railing just in behind the garbage can there and measure out just to double check this chalk line and I can measure from there out. And if the railing seems to be square to this wall, then I think I can work off of this chalk line and that railing to get a square plumb line running across the room in this direction. Um, so on that, um, the tiles, I laid them out dry here just to see where they go. Now I've picked them back up, but working off of this wall with a full tile, and when I get across to here, a full tile ends up, uh, I think I was about one inch back on this cement board here. So I'll put a piece of quarter round trim on our baseboard here to finish filling up that little gap. So we'll basically have a full tile on each side of the room up in this area. And here I'm just going to have a one inch piece to put in, which I got to come back and make up some kind of a, a piece of wooden trim to transition from this floor to this uh, base of this railing here, because I'm going to be higher than what that base is currently there now. So I'm going to transition that with a piece of wood, try and match the stain color, I think, on that. So I think that gets us up to date on where we're at. So if you can see where the dark lines are, there's been no grout put in yet, and the light gray colored back there, those that's the grout actually in place. One tile, when I was coming around and doing my prep work, getting ready to do the grouting, cleaning out the grooves, I noticed I actually had a cracked tile there in that spot. So I took the tile out but I wanted to proceed with the grouting in this area. I wanted to get it done so I could get these cabinets back in, get the, the fridge and the stove are going to go back in so we can get back to a functioning kitchen again. Uh, it's been too many days now without this and we've been trying to make do with slow cookers and temporary table setups in other areas of the house and things like that. And it's it's uh, time to get a kitchen back into working order again. So this will permit us to get the stove and the fridge in. We'll get the countertop on yet today. Uh, get the sink hooked up. The dishwasher is hooked back up now. Uh, and then we'll be able to at least function in that area while I'm still working on the rest. 
and that'll also get the appliances uh, the refrigerator and stuff out of this area that I still need to tile in because we just kind of put everything into that corner where the kitchen table used to sit. I'm going to take a walk out to the garage and I'll show you the wet saw. Uh, it's just a cheap one. Lots of times I see this particular one on sale for about $100, Father's Day gifts, that kind of stuff. Regular price, I think it's around $150. Uh, the blade on this thing seems to last forever. Um, if you're just buying one of these for yourself to use for a home renovation project, you'll never have to replace the blade. It'll do, you know, whatever you need to do at home. I've done one bathroom tub surround, no, two bathroom tub surrounds with this one, one kitchen backsplash, and now I'm doing this floor. And I'm still on the blade that was in it when I bought it. So seems to last a long time. The guard is adjustable up and down. Um, I keep mine set up high. It blocks the water from spraying all over you. And if you're just doing partial cuts in tiles, not all the way through, you can see where, where to stop and things like that. So I just leave my guard in that position. Uh, but it works good. We've got the uh, cupboards and everything back in here now, the countertop on. And we fixed up, remember I had to chop up the inside of this cupboard to get it out from around all the plumbing and whatnot. So we've got it rebuilt. Turned out okay. A little bit of dirt in there, I need to vacuum up now. Uh, so all I ended up using, that quarter inch plywood that we took off of this floor that had the paper stuck on the one side from the vinyl, that's the plywood and I just flipped it over so the paper's on the bottom side. Put a coat of paint on it, uh, cut a couple of pieces up to get around the pipes and rebuild the back of it so we've got that all rebuilt so i just had to make a quick trip to the hardware store the flexible supply lines the ones that were in here they ended up being just that one inch short down there to connect to the shut off taps uh, which wasn't a complete surprise because we did add an inch of material to this floor with the cement back aboard and the half inch plywood and all of that stuff so that's where we lost our inch, so I had to go get a couple of new flex lines this morning. But they're hooked up, we're ready to put the sink back in the hole here now. Um, and this should be all good to go. I'm not going to have any issues with the drain because there's enough movement up and downward in this drain pipe that it'll pull up that extra inch that I need and still connect to the bottom of the sinks. So we're going to have a functioning kitchen again with running water and sewer in it. So that'll help out a great deal when it comes to supper times. And then it'll be back uh, to tiling. So now that we've got all the appliances, this is the corner where they were shoved into here, uh, where that vacuum cleaner and chair are sitting. So I've got all the appliances back out of that corner up here onto the new tiles for the floor. So I'm gonna tackle that area today until I get down to the staircase. And then I gotta kind of split things in half so that we can still get uh, upstairs and downstairs. And then I'll have to come back tomorrow and switch it and do the half that I didn't do today and so on. So that's the goal for today. Well, we ran into a small problem on this particular tile that's going to go in here. The heat register, the other ones that I've come across, you know, it's like a half a tile. So you just cut the U shape out of the tile to fit in around this. This one happens to be right in the middle of the tile. Um, so one option that I started out here, if you cut the tile, that way and then you cut the u-shape so you would cut this u-shape out of here for the vent but you're gonna have what looks like a crack in both ends so you'll have one down here one down here and when you uh, cut these on the wet saw it tends to chip this enamel finish that's baked on these tiles so there's little chips and stuff in the gray surface material so I don't want to do it this way if I can avoid it. Um, I took another tile, marked out where the hole has to be, I drilled a hole in the corner, tried a jigsaw with a blade in it that's meant for cutting ceramic tile, and it didn't work. I, I just about finished one cut and then the tile just cracked, split across the, both ends. So that didn't work. So what I've done now is I've removed the guard on the wet saw. And I'm going to try to see if I can't lower a tile down over the blade so the blade comes up through the tile and see if I can cut the hole in that way. So we'll go out and we'll give that a try. 
but we're going to try and lower the tile down over top of the blade and see if it'll come up through the tile or not, whether this will work. I've set the fence at eight inches away. That's where I need to be from this edge of the tile to the first cut on it for that heat register. And this didn't work. I could feel the vibration holding on to this and it just snapped that side of the tile off. And that's exactly where it broke when I tried uh, drilling the hole and using the jigsaw. I did the same thing, I made that cut, and then as I was just finishing that first cut, it cracked in the exact same spot. So, it does not look like I'm gonna have any choice but to go ahead and use that other tile where I just had the skinny strip and it's gonna look like a crack at each end. Okay, I've got most of this tile cut, so I'm just gonna show you what I've been doing. So with this, with a wet saw, get some scraps out of the way there. So I lifted this guard up just enough that I can see the blade where it's cutting so I can stop at my line. Um, you get a little bit wet because of the water spraying, but without the guard, it'd be a lot worse. Keep the water level as high as you can in this. The wetter it keeps it, not only will it keep the blade cool from overheating, but it keeps the little chips, um, it keeps them knocked down more. They're not bouncing and flying up in your face because you can feel these little chips coming up and hitting you in the face. Make sure you have safety glasses and stuff on using these because you don't want these little particles of ceramic or something in your eye. So what I did, I do the two straight deep cuts first and then I just eyeball kind of the corner to the to in line with the blade and I cut across on an angle so it takes out a big chunk out of the corners and then what's left I just run in and out of the blade. wash this up so there's our tile now that it's all cut out uh, we'll put it in place and I say that it'll look like a crack in it in these two spots the heat register cover is going to cover up maybe a half an inch of that on each side so it's not going to be a great deal I'll notice it because I know exactly where it is but the average person just walking in out of the entire area is not likely going to just pick out that or at least I hope they don't so that's that's where we're at. I hope you found something useful there for the tile saw, anyhow. Well, it's been a while since I've done an update on our flooring project here, so I thought I'd better get one done. So, we've got all of the tile are laid. I just finished uh, putting the grout down and doing some of the initial cleaning up of the haze of the uh, grout material on the surface of the tiles. So. From the dining room door, starting here, all the way down to the other end, and the front hallway out to the front door. So if everything is down, say so the grout work is done, we're now starting to sand and prime all of the uh, trim that came off. We've got these doorways right where I'm standing, the door jams, we have these that we're starting on right now, and the, the baseboard trims. So we'll get that stuff all primed, painted, we're changing it. Uh, to white from the clear varathane that was on the wood before. Uh, if you've watched any of the previous videos, I think we said we were doing this throughout the house and we did one of the bedrooms upstairs. Well, all three now have been done upstairs. Um, so this area now is going to be finished. We need to get some paint 
for this hallway, we had some peel off up here when we took the trim and stuff off, it was stuck to the trim. So we need to get some paint for this uh, hallway and then uh, it'll be all changed over to white as well. The railing, we haven't figured out yet how we'll do the railing, uh, whether we're just gonna leave it the brown that it is or if we'll do the spindles white and maybe leave the, the handrail portion of it brown. Not sure, we've gotta figure out what we're gonna do as far as what we're gonna paint or not paint on that yet. Uh, was there any problems we ran into? We're gonna have to make up a threshold of our own. We've got a real difference in height here. This carpet is just on the 5 8 plywood um, from building the house. There's nothing else underneath this carpet. And now that we've got the plywood and the cement backer board and everything under that tile, we've got a good solid inch difference in height, maybe even a little more than an inch there. So we may have to build our own little threshold plate for that. But we'll get that done for now. Eventually, someday, the plan was to put hardwood in that uh, living room. So that'll help bring it back up to a, a more even level once we do that. But that's down the road. Um, I think I already showed you. We took that cabinet out that was down there. We repainted the walls, the ceiling. So that, that's already done. Uh, we've got a small gap between the tile and this railing. So we're just gonna use the caulking. We've got caulking the same color as grout. So we'll put that in around the edge of the railing. I didn't mention to you before when we were tearing up that quarter inch plywood, it actually goes under that railing. And I didn't wanna remove the railing because that's a supporting wall uh, between the upper level there at the back of the house and this lower level at the front of the house. And I don't know if there's a steel I-beam that runs across that supports everything or if it's relying on those spindles to support uh, two by four wood construction. So I didn't want to take the railing out. So I ended up using uh, a Dremel tool with a saw blade on the end. It would cut through that quarter inch thickness and it would cut it up really close to the railing. And then I came back with a hammer and a wood chisel and just chipped off the remaining bits of wood that were sticking out from under the railing. So I hadn't mentioned that before, but that was another Kind of a tedious, time consuming. It took a couple of hours to get around that railing to get all of that done. Just one of those other extra things that you don't count on. Um, I will show you the front heat register. Um, so we ended up putting this in in two pieces. You can see a white line over here. This one doesn't really show up on this side, but that one does. Um, so this is one separate little tiny piece that we cut off the edge of the tile. Then we cut that out of the tile, put it down, put the little piece back, and that's all you can see out of it is just that little white line. So it's going to be all right. I know it's there, so I'm always going to see it. But for the average person that just walks in the front door, I don't think they're going to notice that. It's just one of those things that I'm always going to know, but nobody else will. So I'm okay with it. Uh, so we're just going to continue on getting the trim uh, sanded, painted, get it back up. This coat closet here had bifold doors on it. And with the increased height of the floor now, they're probably not going to fit just the way they were. We may have to cut those down. Since we started this flooring project, uh, today is five weeks since we started. Now, there was only two weeks of that that I actually had good time to work on it while I was on vacation. The rest of the time, it's just been an hour or two hours at night after work. We just finished doing the ceiling on the grout today. The grout had to sit for I think three days, it said. So it's been four or five, actually, since we did the grout. So we've got that done. The baseboards all used to be uh, wood with a clear varathane on them in here. All of the baseboards, all the trims around the doors and the windows. So we stripped all of those, sanded them, filled all the nail holes, um, repainted all of that a white color. There were some deadbolt, uh, what do you call them, those chains that you slide and hook on the doors, the front door and the back door both had one that we didn't like there. So we took them out. These are steel doors. So then we had to fill the holes in and do all of that so we could repaint the doors. So that's all been finished up. Trim all had to be recut because of the extra height in our floor. And they didn't sell a transition. I don't know how well this will show up. They didn't sell a transition that would cover the height. It was about an inch and a quarter difference now from the carpet 
to that ceramic tile. So we ended up making up our own. Uh, we just took some wood that was an inch and a quarter thick, cut it on a 45, so it's a bit of a slant here, butted it up against the ceramic tile, bought the flat metal stripping, and screwed that down into this piece of wood so that it overlapped the ceramic tile. And we've moved that cupboard now over to here, to the right-hand side of the refrigerator. Eventually, we will rebuild a small bulkhead section up here above it, uh, just so it matches in with the rest of the, the cupboards along that wall. We're not gonna be too worried about it right now because we want more cupboards there. We have the space for it if I back up. We have room for it, certainly on that wall. There's nothing else there. And we do, the wife does lots of canning and stuff like that. So we'd like to have more cupboards along that wall. So I may end up actually building some sort of a cabinet um, and it may look like those and we might extend the bulkhead even further or maybe we get rid of that and we just we build an entirely different cabinet that's not made uh, to look like the cupboards but fits well in that spot. So I think that all turned out good. There's some of the stuff she harvested today, a bunch of zucchini, tomatoes, some peppers, Roma tomatoes, more zucchini, more peppers. I forget what these guys are called, but these are kind of good. They're like a little cherry tomato. They start out, they're a dark purple color, and then as they ripen, they turn red. They're quite good. Um, we've got diced tomatoes there that she's already done up. So the only thing left now are the light switches and wall plugs. Uh, we're updating all of them. You might remember from earlier videos where we did some rooms. As we're painting and doing the trim, we're changing these all out to the rectangle shape uh plugs and receptacles and whatnot so that's all i got left there's some on the wall down there above the counter uh there's a couple of others wall plug over there with a night light in it and things like that so that's the last thing there is left to do and that's going to wrap this project up thank you for watching